Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. I've got another product to unbox for you today. It's the Tempo Key 25 from a company called Sanito. You can see their, their logo up here. And um, this was sent to me for review purposes, so if that matters to you, it has been disclosed. In any case, it's a 25 key MIDI controller that has pads, knobs, and other things. And it actually looks like a really cool little controller. I did a little research on the company and there's a lot of people out there that really like these. So I'm super glad that they found me and sent this to me. I'm gonna get the box open and we're gonna check it out. Okay, let's get this baby open. Let's start by removing the sort of over wrap. There we go. And here is our box in case you're curious. Here's the back and all the different sides. Let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, see a connection guide right here. It's kind of a nice little touch. Oh, I didn't realize it came with a case. Oh, that is cool. I like that a lot. And a little strap. And that is all that's in the box. So let's get rid of the box. Now, one thing I see, it would have been nice if this zipper would have gone all the way down to here. Because anytime they put these partial zippers, it's usually hard to get the item out of the case, but let's find out. Oh, there's another. It's a goodie pack in here. More than one. What do we got here? Okay, let's take a look. This appears to be a USB power cable. It's got a USB type A on this end, and then assuming that's the power interface. Here we've got a USB type A, the USB type C. Here we've got a MIDI dongle. This is for TRS MIDI. That tells me that it has the ability to output traditional five pin MIDI, which that makes me very happy because I always find it frustrating when MIDI controllers don't support traditional MIDI. Got a little sticker. Oh, a little dongle that converts uh, USB-C to USB-A. That's kind of nice that it includes that. Got a little cleaning cloth and then a user manual here. Now, as I said before, these partial zippers always make it hard to get the product out. Here we go. I don't know why they just don't make the zipper go to there. Like, seriously. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that'd be a hard thing to do, but here's our keyboard. There we go. Oh, I like the feel of that key bed. Oh, yeah. That key bed feels really nice. Okay. We've got pads. We've got some buttons here. We've got some functions. We have some knobs we can map. We have a pitch and modulation uh, sensor. It's like we've got an interface here and a little window. Let's go ahead and get this baby plugged in. Okay, so here is our keyboard. And if I flip here, actually I'm gonna turn it around this way so you can see it better. But you can see there are four jacks here. We've got this MIDI out jack, and that's where we'll plug in that dongle if we wanna do five pin MIDI, if we wanna use it with hardware, which I'll probably demonstrate in a little bit. This is a USB type C for interfacing with the computer. We have a sustain pedal if we wanna use a traditional sort of you know um, foot pedal with it. And then we have our five volt, which is where our um, that little USB power cable can go. So first question everybody's gonna have, if you plug it in via USB, does that give it power and MIDI? And check it out, you see everything light up? Yes, USB alone will give it power and MIDI. So right now I have it plugged into my workstation. I'm gonna do a screen capture there as well. So if we look there, I've actually pulled up my digital audio workstation program and I have selected the lead called Anthemic Lead. And if I play this, We hear that, okay? So that's using that patch. Now, real quick, let me just go over some of, some of the basics here. You notice there was no audio jack because a MIDI controller does not produce sounds. What it does is it sends messages for another instrument to produce sounds. So the computer is producing the sounds that you're hearing. But all these here are programmable and there's actually a piece of software you can download. I did it right here from Sonido and this allows you to program it to do whatever you want. So you can see these represent the pads here and these over here represent the knobs. And you can see there's a knob A and knob B bank along with a pad A and a pad B bank. Okay, the way that you select those is down here on the keyboard. Now you're on the orange bank, now you're on the white bank. Same thing with the pads. Real quick, let me just kind of show some of the features. If I hit a note here, I have the ability to shift one key at a time with this button. 
like that. Okay, or I can shift one octave at a time with this button. Um, you have your modulation wheel and your pitch wheel. They'll sound something like this. So I programmed this one here to control the filter modulation. So if I push the key and I turn this, you can hear that filter modulation. And I'm not touching the mouse or the keyboard or anything like that, keyboard meaning the computer's keyboard. It's just picking that up from that knob. And you can even have it do other things, like for instance, I have this one programmed to do the volume of the track. So if I do that and I turn it down, we see the track, you see and hear the track get quieter. And as I turn it back up, we actually see that slider move and I can move it into overdrive territory or back down, okay? So that's what you can kind of do. I program these to be bass sound, so. Okay, so I've selected one called Big Square, you can see, and it sounds like this. Okay, now I did this to demonstrate the arpeggiator. So if I click the arpeggiator button here, you can see this tap tempo button flashes. And then if I tap it fast, we can see it's gonna flash really fast. If I tap it slow, we can see it'll flash really, really slow. I'm gonna put it at kind of something like that to demonstrate. And then what we can do with the arpeggiator is we can hold down multiple keys and it will sort of arpeggiate between them like this. So obviously we don't just have to do synth sounds with this either, because we can do whatever patch we've got loaded. So you can see I have a harp patch here about as far from a synth as you can get. And let's see what that sounds like. Beautiful. What I've done here, I've still got the USB cable coming in here to power the keyboard, but then I've used the little MIDI dongle to use a traditional MIDI cable to go to my Dave Smith MoFo over here, which is an analog synthesizer. And then what should happen is if I hit any key, it should be controlling this and we should hear it. Now this patch is called Noise Machine, so it's definitely a noisy patch. But you can hear it works. We could pick a different patch over here. Let's see what this one sounds like. There we go. Now I can still program these knobs to do things. So there you have it, folks. That was a uh, unboxing quick demo of the Tempo Key 25 by Sunido. Now you can find these on Amazon. They're about $99, so extremely affordable for the amount of functionality and whatnot built into this. I love the fact that it comes with a case. It's extremely portable. I like that they actually thought to include a um, sustain pedal here. And I do like the fact that they included the MIDI dongle for the five pin MIDI. I would have liked it better if they would have just put the five pin MIDI right on the back so you didn't have to carry that dongle with you. But in lieu of that, it, it is nice that they're at least acknowledging that people do want that five pin MIDI still. Um, I really like this. I really think that you'd have a hard time finding more bang for the buck in the MIDI controller world. If you like what I do on this channel, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. If you like this video, just give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys soon.